สวัสดีค่ะ Welcome to Hot Thai Kitchen. So recently, I posted a video sharing a pho recipe from my mother-in-law's best friend. Now everybody in the family was super excited about that, and then my mother-in-law casually mentioned, "You know, I make this dish that your husband really loves." And being a good daughter-in-law that I am, I knew exactly what she was asking. So today I'm going to share Craig's childhood favorite tomato beef stir fry or fan king or yok fan in Cantonese. Now this is a classic Cantonese dish, and when Craig was growing up, this is something he ate every other week. Everybody loved it. In fact, when I asked him which of his mom's dishes he most wants me to preserve, he said this one. But of course, there was no recipe written down, so I had to do primary research. I went to her house, I watched her make it, I asked a bunch of questions, and after a few tries, I was able to create what Craig confirmed tastes exactly as he remembers it. So I'm honored to share with you Auntie Jenny's fan cake ngau yok fan. Let's get started. So for the prep, we've got to marinate the beef, make the sauce, and prep the produce. First, the beef. Auntie Jenny always used flank steak, but before slicing, you want to look at the direction of the grain. Which way are the meat fibers running? Once I got that, I'm going to divide this along the grain so that I get the right width, and then I'm going to cut thin slices against the grain, about an eighth of an inch thick. You want this thin so it's not chewy, and this will ensure that each piece has very short muscle fibers, which means more tender beef. And a partially frozen steak will make this a lot easier to slice. Now let's mix the marinade. I'm going to mix together some oyster sauce, soy sauce, garlic powder, ginger powder, and black pepper. Set aside that marinade for now and mix some baking soda with water. Baking soda in beef marinade is a classic Chinese trick, and it, the high pH in baking soda prevents meat fibers from. Tightening up completely when it's cooked, which means more tender beef. It makes a big difference, and it allows you to use a not too expensive cut of meat and still have a tender product at the end. For the full science of this, check out What's Eating Dan's episode on baking soda. I like to dissolve baking soda in some water first because baking soda can get little clumps in it. You know, especially if it's old, and little clumps of baking soda in your mouth is not a good thing. I'm going to mix the baking soda solution into the beef first to ensure full contact. And then I'll add the rest of the marinade and mix it up. Now this just needs to sit for five minutes for the baking soda to work its magic. Now the sauce. I'm going to combine some ketchup. This is why kids love this dish. Sugar and salt. And then I'm going to dissolve the cornstarch in some water to get rid of any lumps, and this will help thicken the sauce. So most people will add the starch slurry at the end, so they can add just enough to get the desired consistency. But I find that if I measure all of my ingredients, the amount of starch needed is also going to be the same every time. So to streamline the process, I'm going to add the slurry right into my sauce. This also prevents me from taking too much time at the end, sort of adjusting consistency, and then risking overcooking the beef and the tomatoes, which can happen very quickly. Finally, for the produce, I'm using Roma tomatoes, and you want Roma because they are the least watery. I first cut them in half, remove the top, and cut each half into three wedges. You'll also need some garlic, shallots or onion, ginger, and green onions with the white and green parts separated. Before we make the stir fry, we gotta fry some eggs. Auntie Jenny always serves this dish with eggs on top. I don't know how common this is in other households, but at the Lambs, it is a must. You can cook the eggs however you like, but Craig likes them with crispy edges and runny yolks, which means a lot of oil and high heat. FYI, I like to fry the eggs first so I can do it in the same pan without having to clean it in between. If you are gonna fry the eggs in a separate pan, you can do it after the stir fry if you like. Okay, heat on. Ooh. Now in a hot wok, and this is just the same oil that I used when I fried the eggs. We can reuse that. Now, for better searing, you should do it in batches. But in the spirit of simple home cooking, I'm gonna do what Auntie Jenny does, which is completely crowd my wok. Now the baking soda is actually going to help our beef brown even better because that's the other thing that high pH does: improve browning. And then when it's about halfway done, 
you can flip the beef. Yeah, we got some nice browning going on here. And now I'm just gonna toss everything until it's about 90% cooked. Okay, that's it. I'm gonna turn the wok off and then take the beef out for now. And yes, I'm putting it back into the same bowl that the beef was in before. Don't panic. We're gonna cook everything anyway, again. In the same pan, on medium heat now, I'm gonna put in a little bit more oil. but not too much because we already have oil in the beef. And then all the aromatics will go in. Give this a toss until the garlic starts to turn a little bit golden and everything smells really good. You can add a little bit more oil if you feel like it's a little dry. There we go. Now, the tomatoes go in. Okay, this is where you need to pay attention. Timing is crucial because you don't want the tomatoes to completely turn to mush. So what I'm looking for is for the tomatoes to start to look soft around the edges. So once the edges sort of lose their sharpness, that's your cue for the beef to go back in. And this should just take like 30 seconds. Okay, that looks good to me. I'm starting to sort of feel the edges soften. The beef goes back in. The sauce goes in. And also the white part of the green onions. And then this just gets tossed for just a minute longer to cook the cornstarch in the sauce. I can turn the heat up to high now. And also to the cook the beef through. And then the thing that you're looking for is your sauce needs to be boiling because that's how you know the cornstarch is cooked. And the tomatoes should look soft, but not falling apart. It should be like luscious and juicy, juicy, but still holding shape. And keeping in mind that even after you turn off the beef, the wok, it will continue to cook a little bit more. The skin of the tomato is starting to peel, perfect. Off, and then I'm just gonna toss in some of the green of the green onion. Whew, man, so easy, so good. Look at that, look how juicy and luscious that is. And as it sits, more sauce will come out. So don't be overzealous with like, oh, there's not enough sauce. More sauce is coming. So. Fan king ao yok fan. Fan means rice, so of course this is served with rice. Look at that. The tomatoes are perfect. Still holding shape, but not completely falling apart. Wing. I should note that Auntie Jenny actually likes her eggs scrambled. So she'll fry an egg up for everybody and then she'll make scrambled eggs for herself. So feel free to do whatever you want with the egg or skip the egg. It is, even though this was not a part of my childhood, I taste it and I understand exactly why this bring, this is so nostalgic for so many kids because like that sweet and sour ketchup flavor, I mean, that's such a kid friendly flavor, um, but it's also good for adults. Like this is not like, you know, just kids only food. The beef is tender even though it's flank, and flank isn't always tender, especially when cooked well done, but that baking soda trick really makes a difference. Um, tomatoes are luscious and juicy. Man, I mean, it's, it's quick, it's easy, and if you've never had it and you've got kids, they're gonna love it. I fed it to my son, he loves it. Not the tomatoes, he doesn't eat tomatoes, but he loves everything else. <laughs> So the recipe, as always, will be on HotThaiKitchen.com. A special thanks to all of my Patreon supporters who help support the show. If you want to know what that's all about, how to get direct access to me and watch the videos ad-free, you can check out the link in the description below. Thank you, as always, for watching, and I will see you next time. Sawatika! So